What's up y'all, The Nature Girl 30 here, and the Royal Rumble has come and gone. So here is my review of Royal Rumble, of this year's Royal Rumble 2022. Kicking off the Royal Rumble was Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. This was match of the night for me. I was highly impressed with the in-ring psychology that Seth Rollins put on Roman Reigns because for so long we never really saw Roman Reigns to be a vulnerable character. He was always the tribal chief. He was always the guy never to be dominated. But Seth Rollins, when he came out in his shield gear, he definitely played with the head of Roman Reigns all night. And honestly, I have asked for months, actually for a year, to see Roman Reigns as a tribal chief without the Usos helping him. And everything that Seth Rollins said in his promo prior was everything that I actually did have issues with. But I saw him as a tribal chief here. He definitely brought it. They both did. This match told a story. The psychology was amazing. I absolutely love every bit of this match. We not only saw a very vulnerable side of Roman Reigns, we saw a very aggressive side because he still never forgave Seth Rollins for what he did. And it showed towards the end of the match. He beat the ever-loving crap out of him with a chair and would not stop until he actually had the resolve on his face, which looks like he had a giant burden lift off of his shoulders and he was just able to be a champ and walk away. That was like the best way to tell a story, but I don't think that this is going to be over yet. I am excited where they're going to go from here. Without a shadow of a doubt, I can honestly say that this match is a five-star match. Five stars. I am giving it five stars, and I am holding to that. This match was amazing and a must-watch. The second match of the night was the Women's Royal Rumble match, and this match, in my humble opinion, was a lot more fun than the men's. It was nice to see Sasha Banks come out and cosplay as Sailor Moon, as well as Melina being her first opponent. Even though Melina wasn't in there that long, it was nice to see how she enjoyed being in the ring and she was all tearful. And honestly, it was a very heartfelt moment. Sasha Banks dominated pretty much most of the time until she was eliminated by Queen... Uh, Zelina, which was kind of heartbreaking in a way. But the biggest disappointment of the night actually was Bianca Belair because it's not the fact that Bianca Belair's performance was bad. It's just that she barely eliminated anyone and she wasn't as dominant as she was at the prior Royal Rumble. So it was kind of disappointing for her not to be that dominant, but she still wasn't bad by any means. Honestly, I really wasn't looking forward to seeing Sonya Deville enter the match, but I will say it was somewhat strategic for her to have her jacket on and wait until Naomi came out. But I was kind of a bit suspect that she kind of attacked Cameron first and nobody else in the ring just to wait for Naomi to come out. And since Black History Month is right around the corner, it does not look good. And this elimination that she had just by pulling her out after she was eliminated is for another discussion at another time. But it was nice to see Ivory come out as well as Nikki Bella. And Nikki Bella's performance was amazing. She was way better than she was the first time that she came back. And seeing Mickey James come out, to be honest, I really didn't care because it kind of blew their load. And I wish that this was a secret, but she actually had an amazing performance by taking out um, by taking out Michelle McCool. And honestly, even though she already had a redemption art, well, not a redemption art, but a payback um, against Michelle McCool, it was nice to see her being taken out. Then Nikki Bella came in and man, did she clean house. She looked good. They didn't look like they missed a beat. The Bella twins looked amazing. And seeing Sarah Logan make a return was also amazing, as well as her somewhat lackluster reunion with Liv Morgan. But everything changed when Ronda Rousey came out. And Ronda Rousey cleaned house. And it she had she pretty much had that look like I'm going to beat the crap out of you. And then you had Brie Bella taking revenge on Nikki for throwing her out last time. But it was nice to see Shayna Baszler coming in at number 30 with Ronda Rousey in the ring. And of course, we get that stare down between her and Charlotte Flair, which is something I predicted. And honestly, we all knew that when Ronda Rousey came out, we knew who the winner was going to be, and she won the Royal Rumble. Honestly, guys, 
when comparing this to the men's this was way better than the men's and even though there were issues here and there i have to give this four stars this was actually a really good rumble to watch and very fun third match of the night was becky lynch versus dewdrop for the raw women's championship and I'm going to be honest here, this match by far compared to the Women's Royal Rumble was the weakest match of the night. It's not that the performances were bad, it's just that the pacing was a bit off. And I'm not really sure if Becky Lynch is used to wrestling someone as someone the same size as Dewdrop. And you can kind of tell at times, but it was not bad by any means. Like this, these women really knew what they were doing. It wasn't the fact that they were constantly botching in the ring. And Becky Lynch did her best. You showed a frustration in her face, and she did. And Dewdrop. To be honest with you, I'm happy to see her at the Royal Rumble. This was a really good match for her. It wasn't her best matches. I've seen her best matches in NXT UK. But this match was not bad. It's just average. And it could have been better for being a championship match. But I can't really say that I enjoyed myself watching it. I was a bit bored. It just was a bit slow, sluggish. It just seems like they did their best. But I'm not going to lie. When it came to Dewdrop doing that devastating bat drop upon Becky Lynch, I thought she cracked every rib in her body. Like, it was, it was devastating to watch. But we also kind of knew who the winner was going to be here, especially with the rumor of Ronda Rousey returning at the time. We already knew that Bex was going to win this, which really didn't make you feel like Dewdrop had a shot in the dark of winning. And I think that affected the match a lot. If I didn't know anything about Ronda Rousey or anything about the new returns, it probably would have changed my personal viewpoint towards this match. But I ended up finding out way too early, and it did change a little bit. It made me feel like Dewdrop didn't have a chance. But this match was not bad by any means. It was just average. So I have to give this match a 3 out of 5 star. It's not horrible. It's just average. And it could have been better if they kept their mouths shut about the entrants that were coming in the Royal Rumble. Now with the women's match out of the way, we finally get the big hoss match that we have been waiting for for years. Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar, the WWE Champion. Now, I have been so hyped about this match. I have been waiting for this match to happen. And man, when it did, I was getting annoyed. Because it was suplex after suplex after suplex with a pause. Walking around like a bunch of wolves. Then another suplex. Then another suplex and another suplex and i'm just like okay maybe they're doing this as a dick measuring contest i have no idea maybe that's their version but i kind of want to see something a little bit more i don't know not high pace but a uh, moving something like these guys are mma fighters so i would expect them to actually start throwing hands and throwing hands quick but then when Bobby Lashley started swinging on, I'm like, finally, we just get something out of these guys. And Bobby Lashley started to pick up the pace. And then he actually speared himself into a barricade. And then it just went back to the whole suplex city. And I'm just like, okay, enough of that. So, But we did get a few spears. So they did change it up a little bit. But this match, maybe my expectations were a bit too high. Because this was a match I've been waiting for for so long. But I kind of expected something a little bit more. And I didn't feel that I got it out of this match. They tried, no doubt. But it was just slow. And even though Brock Lesnar's in his 40s and Bobby Lashley's in his 30s, they can still keep it up. They can still pick up the pace. And I was just really disappointed. And also, seeing how the ref is made out of tissue paper, getting hit on the shoulder, then rolling out in the ring and staying down. As soon as I saw that, I predicted shenanigans. And boy, did we get shenanigans. It wasn't anything I was happy about. Whenever the Club Atlantis um, reactions come up, y'all gonna see how I reacted to it. Roman Reigns, out of nowhere, came in spirit Brock and created an interference. Something I didn't want. I wanted a one-on-one -on -one match. I wanted a clean win. I did not want a Roman Reigns interference with Paul Heyman's little Warris tail being involved in it. And of course, Paul Heyman will never go away. And I'm getting sick of his existence. And he's starting to really irritate me. 
And the fact that you got Roman Reigns interfering in this to give Bobby Lashley the win cheapens the win so much to where it just irritated the hell out of me. I wanted Bobby Lashley to have a clean win against Brock, something that he could say he did, but he got help from Roman now, so it is just tainted. I'm sorry. I can't be like, oh, yeah, he's a champion, yeah, because Roman helped him just to get back at Brock. And, yeah, it's a part of a storyline, but good grief, it cheapens Bobby's win, and I am not thrilled about it. I'm still not. I was annoyed and irritated and just fuming about this ending i hated it with every fiber of my being but that doesn't mean the match was bad even though this match was something that we waited for for so long it was average at best so i have to give this a three out of five that doesn't mean it's awful but it should have been better especially how we waited so long for this match to happen the cool down match of the night was the Miz versus Marie. Well, the Miz and Marie's versus Edge and Beth Phoenix. I really didn't predict that this match was going to be this good. I thought it was going to be a squash match. I thought Edge and Beth Phoenix were going to dominate the entire time and it was going to be one sided. But boy, am I so happy that I'm wrong. I am incredibly impressed with Maurice. Maurice was the MVP of this match, in my opinion. She did a Hurricane Rana to um, to Edge. She was pretty much probably one of the best, I'm not going to say valets, but honestly, she was best when it came, or she was really good when it came to foiling Edge's plans. I love the fact that The Miz wasn't afraid to get in Beth's face. I, this was great. This match was amazing. And like I said, Maurice was the MVP of this match. I was so impressed with her. I thought she was going to be slaughtered by Beth Phoenix the entire time. I thought this feud was going to be about them since she took a brick to Beth Phoenix's head. But man, was this not one-sided. I was so happy to see that because The Miz is probably one of the most underrated wrestlers on the roster. Nobody gives him the credit he deserves. And honestly, he deserves credit here. He is probably one of the best villains that I have seen in this match. And yeah, you can say that Edge was great in his heyday. He was good in his heyday. Here, nah, not really. He's supposed to be the face. But they, I'm sorry, Beth Phoenix and Maurice, I would honestly love to see a one-on-one -on -one with them, seeing how Maurice got so much better in the ring so quickly since she's been out of the game for so long. But good grief, that was just amazing. <laughs> I was so impressed by her. I really was. And I really wanted just to see them go at it more instead of the guys go at it more. But the one issue that I have with these intergender matches is the fact that it is one-sided. The women can actually touch the men, but the men can't touch them back. That's the one thing that bothers me. But anyway, that's for a discussion at another time. But honestly, I was really impressed how this match was, even though I didn't like the finish. In my humble opinion, I think the wrong person won here. And I do not at all agree with the fact that Edge and Beth Phoenix came out with the win. I just don't because The Miz kind of needed a little bit more than he did. His legacy is already cemented as well as Beth Phoenix. And even though Maurice is winning outside the game, The Miz is still working here and he really did need the win. So I don't agree with the finish, but that doesn't mean this match was bad. This match was way too good. A lot better than I thought it would be. So I never thought I would say this for an intergender match, but I gotta give it four stars. This match was good. <laughs> it was really good. I was highly impressed with Maurice, even though the wrong person won. And the main event of the Royal Rumble was the men's Royal Rumble match with AJ Styles coming out at number one and Shinsuke Nakamura coming out at number two. I'm not going to lie, this match, this one-on-one -on -one match that we had for a little bit was way better than their WrestleMania match. And I kind of wish we got that first <laughs> before we got this here. I'm going to be honest, this, this Royal Rumble match was not the best. The women's match actually was better than this. I never thought I would say that because usually the men's will always outshine the women's or it will be dead even. It was it was boring. I hate to say that because we really didn't get a lot of secret um we didn't get a lot of um of special entrance. We didn't get except except for Johnny Knoxville. 
and honestly i don't know who that black dude is in the back maybe he's only a part of um jackass forever because i know he's not a part of the original crew and i'm surprised we didn't see um steve-o or chris pontius there but anyway johnny knoxville is not afraid to take a bump even though the dude is in his 50s he can still take a bump pretty hard i wasn't scared for this guy at all but <laughs> i hate to say it i kind of laughed a little bit when Sami Zayn gave him a halluva kick to the face in order to eliminate him i actually thought that that was pretty funny but after that the match kind of died down the energy died down a lot at least for me i didn't really care about anybody else that came out after that it just didn't feel special and especially omas's old lummox ass that he was out there unfortunately omas is the only giant of the match and they have to have at least one giant in every royal rumble and he was the only one that was still working that was a giant so but i did laugh how he knocked out ricochet like i'm sorry ricochet's elimination was so cartoony and very funny but of course he was eliminated by everybody because everyone was smart no it wasn't i think ricochet got him out and then he was eliminated but anyway, when Matt Riddle came in, the pace kind of picked up a little bit. And honestly, that was kind of where it plateaued. It didn't really get higher from there. I really wanted it to. I really want to love this match, but it was just boring. When Drew McIntyre came in, I didn't really care. I, it didn't really matter that much to me. The guys was actually pretty surprised to see Drew McIntyre back because he was out with a neck injury. But I think that neck injury was minor, so it was good to see him at least... It was some sort of enjoyment you know not so much for me because i didn't really care that much and of course kevin owens came out right after him and i'm not gonna lie the biggest botch of the night kofi kingston trying to do his old is his miracle dives and he botched that <laughs> he ended up hitting the ground and up getting eliminated his feet touched the ground after he grabbed the barricade and got eliminated. That was the funniest moment of the night for me. Because Kofi never misses a beat, but he missed this time. Bad Bunny ended up coming in. And honestly, Bad Bunny really did have a very impressive performance. Like he usually does. But I'm sorry. Seeing Shane McMahon come out there... I wasn't too hype. It's not that Shane McMahon is a bad character. It's just... Why is he here? <laughs> like why does he need to be in the rumble there's no reason for him to be here and throwing those potato punches i'm sorry i love me some shane mcmahon but there was really no need for him to be here and if that's the only special entrant that we're going to get man we did we got the raw end of the deal and at 29 here comes boring old randy orton and i'm like come on 30 you gotta save our lives here good grief it's starting to get boring it's not even that interesting i could care less if he does an rko out of nowhere i've seen that so many times it's great for one-on-ones but not great here at least to me and then came in brock lesnar at number 30. i was so pissed like i was not a happy camper and i think i probably annoyed everybody in the club atlantis crew because i spent my entire time bitching about the fact that brock lesnar is in this match right after he had a championship match with bobby lashley with no rhyme or reason how he got in there or who gave him the number and i wouldn't be shocked they were like stay tuned to raw you're gonna find out how it happened no i want to know now because it made no sense for brock to be there it made no sense at all the fact that brock lesnar just had a championship match with bobby lashley he came in cleaned house and won the fact is he wasn't even supposed to be here and this is the third time this happened and y'all correct me if i'm wrong if it's not but brock has been in matches that he's never been in never supposed to be in never was invited to and wins why does this keep happening all because a roman good grief poor writing can i just say poor writing there has to be a better way to get brock lesnar in a match or in a storyline without it not making sense it was so dumb i was so pissed the entire night i was angry but i will say this I am not going to rate the bad ending for the overall match. I have to say the match was already boring from the jump. It didn't really excite me much. I got to give it a 2 out of 5. It's not because of Brock. It's just because it was boring. Overall, Royal Rumble 2022 
gets a four out of five stars from me. Now, I know I was harsh on some of the matches, but to be honest with you, it doesn't mean that the entire card was bad. Yes, you did have some very controversial finishes with Brock versus Ron uh, with Brock versus Bobby Lashley, as well as the, the lackluster performances. Well, just pretty much the lackluster overall in general <laughs> for the Men's Royal Rumble. The Women's Royal Rumble was far better than expected. I was really impressed with the intergender tag match between The Miz and Maurice. The Miz and Maurice versus Beth Phoenix and Edge. And I was also, even though it was average, it wasn't bad with Becky uh, Becky Lynch versus Dewdrop. That match really wasn't bad at all. But to be honest with you guys, this was a pretty solid card. I actually did enjoy myself and I don't think that this pay-per-view was horrible even though I hated the finish to the Men's Royal Rumble as well as the Bobby Lashley match. I did not like how it went, but it still doesn't mean that the pay-per-view was bad. I still give it four out of five stars. It was still a good time, but I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know how you feel. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace out.